hello, we're going to see if this is going to work, because I think that it was trying to post, but it wasn't posting right. Hit the wrong button. Uh, Chloe is going to help me. So if you got knocked off, you know what, my fingers are getting too big for my camera, so I need to find something better. But we're going to do a, what you call a, uh, uh, what was I saying earlier? Challenge. A cha yeah, an uh, iron challenge. So we have our Stinger, we have our Electric Lux. This is the one that I showed a couple of times. I really like this one because what's so wonderful is that it will give us a constant steam for like 15 minutes. So when you're steaming, you can steam your curtains and whatever you might want to do. And that is going to be awesome. So what I've done, ladies, is I've gotten uh, some wrinkled, I've wrinkled up some fabric. So I have had some pieces in here. So I'm going to just simply press these pieces equally with each of these irons so that you can pick the right one for you. Remember, ladies, we're doing these at a discount. All right. So the Electric Lux, uh, it's normally... Mm-hmm. I remember it. Oh, $159. It's normally $159. You get 20% off of that. Thank God that thing is working. On our Singer Iron, it is normally... She got a little weight to her. It is normally $89. You'll get 20% off of that. All right. So, $89. That's, 90. that's what? One, that's $18 off. All right, so you'll get these on a special deal if you if you want one this weekend between now and Saturday. I'm going to start with our Singer iron and show you how you would just simply plug this in. It's all plugged in. It has a 10 foot cord, ladies. This one actually have has a self cleaning button so that you can clean your iron. Um, what you call it? Uh, by hitting the self cleaner, all right. All of both of them have water to place inside here. You can just use regular water, not the steel water, but if you want to use the steel, that's fine. You have a wonderful little gauge from steam to no steam on the front of the iron on the top here where you have your holder. You have plus and minus that will give you an arrange of heat. So, we're going to turn this one on. And it clean it beeps at you to let you know that you're in a certain um, temperature. So first you have nylon. This is wool and silk. This is polyester. And it shows you that you have to have steam. And this is maximum. <coughs> Cottons and linens. We're gonna allow this to heat up. We're gonna put this on steam. We have a steam button, we have a spray button. Look how quickly that thing set set up. I did not have this plugged in to just now. So these are great irons. I'm gonna now show you how that you have the electric lux, all right? The electric lux is very similar to the Singer. It's got not as many little buttons to worry about, but you have the spray. You have your plus and minus on top here. Minus will take you from synthetics, nylon, wool, cotton, and then linen. It went, it went out. We have too many things plugged in. Let me turn the light off. All right, so we're going to start over. It just, my little breaker just went. We're going to hit plus. We're going to start this with uh, the Electrolux. So back at the Electrolux, spray right here. All right, there's a wide range of spray. We have the plus and minus for your heat, your opening for your water, and that is the simplicity of the electric lux, okay? I do like the amount of grooves that's inside of both of them. They're very good with the grooves. So your steamer is on both of them really nice. The sole plates are very nice on both. Now this one's already set up. Got to put this one back on for hot, hot, hot. If you want to hold this down, it also has a 10 foot cord. I have to wait for it to heat up. I want you to see how this one's 
it's a steamer. So this one right here, instead of it just steaming like a normal iron, it does put out an, uh, a, a, jet, a jet of steam so that if you're steaming or steaming something on, up, up, up here, you can do that. And I just turned it back off. I'm so sorry, my bad. Because I was holding it wrong. All right. So I do like the, the electric locks. I do have different fabrics to, for us to test them equally. I have some loosely woven fabric that's really crazily wrinkled. And I didn't turn this one back on again. All right, so we're ready to roll in a second here, guys. So you ready? We're gonna do the Electrolux first. I'm not gonna use anything but just the iron. I have it on steam. I have it on steam. Because that's the way it is. And then we're gonna just start, but I'm not gonna hit a jet of steam at all. I'm just letting it press that fabric. And there we go. Nicely done. I love it. Let's take the same thing, same fabric, lay it down, and let's do our Singer iron, okay? And no steam, I'm just gonna press it with just the heat itself and the normal steam. Look how quick and easy that thing did. No, the steam did burst out of that one. I didn't have to do a burst of steam. This is something good to know, right? First of all, lightweight fabric. We're gonna equally press these, look. This is kind of fun. All right, the singer one, because I have my steamer on, it is steaming the whole time. This one, I would have to put a burst of steam in, but that's when you're gonna, you can use this more for a quilter. So if you don't wanna apply steam, you don't always have to cut the steam off, you just don't use steam. So if you're a sewer in a quilter, you don't want the steam, this one sets up and it's done. It's really cool. Let's take that wrinkled fabric here and this wrinkled fabric here. And let's equally press this. And as you can see, oh my gosh, they both doing a good job. So it's it really de 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 determined. Hmm? That one wins. This one, yeah, somebody said this, this one. I think that one wins too because it has the steam on it. I can turn the steamer off. I can turn the steamer right off like that. So then it'll be just like this arm. Okay? Alright, but that that one does a really good job. This one I would have to apply some steam to it. But that's fine. But remember, this one steams steams up to I keep on turning the button off. This one will steam up to 15 minutes straight. Alright? So there we go with our irons and I think that they're great irons. Either one that you go for, I think you're gonna love it. I did have some other fabric, but I think that that gives the, the, the little competition there. Now, are we ready to do Are we ready to do our twin needle work? I'm gonna put these hot irons away, okay? These are 20% off. I'm gonna slide that over the way. Here, just take this and move that camera over here so that, so that they can come over here and see. Come on over here to me. Cause I'm gonna go this way. And let's talk about how you would do a uh, twin needle in a sewing machine. And I'm gonna tilt this just a little bit more so that they can see the face. I want them to see this part here. This is important there. Up further. Go up a little bit higher. Yep. Perfect. Let me just make 
make sure. Because the part, the part what they need to know is right here. It's not up high enough. All right, so we're going to go up a bit high. All right, ladies. So when you are doing twin needle, you, did, you will determine on what size twin needle you want, what distance you want. Okay, so I'm going to use here my stretch twin needle, okay? Because I'm going to start off with uh, a stretch fabric. And I, since I'm going to be working with two different, like three different weights of fabric, I'm just going to, I determined to use this one. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm using this one. This is going to be a 4.0. Um, that will be the distance between the two needles. So you're going to first take out your standard needle, ladies. Use your tool that comes with your machine and loosen that screw. Remember, ladies, you're not going to use your needle threader. You have to not use that because it's going to, it won't work because you have a twin needle. So here's our twin needle. So you have a 4.0, all right? It's got a blue coat on top. Put your pencil foot down. If you've never used a twin needle, this is an opportune time for you to see what I'm doing and pull that needle out or either grab some needles. And a twin needle is either great for top stitching. It's great when you're doing an alteration on a shirt and you want to have that two rows of stitching without having to do two rows of stitching. <clears throat> two rows of stitching sometimes will make your fabric stretch out of shape where a twin needle, one, one, one sew will be perfect. All right, and then you're going to now use this little tool that comes with your machine. This tool right here is your secondary spool holder. Okay, it comes in your pack of goodies. You're going to place that secondary spool holder right up here. There's a hole specially made for that. You're going to take your embroidery thread or your sewing thread or whatever thread you might be using, place it on here. And as you can see, that is going to be the holder pin for your uh, second spool. Now, you can also use your little spool cap to keep everything all nice and pretty and on the machine. So you get per perfect uh, thread, off the thread delivery. If you do not want to use this, there is a spool holder that you can purchase for Juki machines. All right which is a secondary spool holder that fits on the back of the machine with a telescope and you can use cone threads and everything but it just simply slips on the back you can take it off when you don't want but it's two little holes back there so if you have not seen this uh before come to our sewing machine department and look at this you'll get 20 percent off of these spool holders if you hate wine and bobbins there's also a sale on the bobbin winder. If you want a separate little mechanism to wind bobbins, ladies, we do have that on special for 20% off. So we have a Singer bobbin winder that winds all bobbins. But when you're threading your machine up as a standard machine and you're using the machine with the traditional piece that comes with, you're going to take this thread and you're going to go through the same mechanism, ladies, as you would do Needle up. And this one, you don't thread. And this spool is going to act a little funny, so hold on one second. Let me get it right. Delivery. This spool works better inside of here. Let me see if this other spool will work. You just want to make sure that the spool, the thread comes off the spool correctly. Let's try this one. It's the angle. That should work. That one, for some reason, the other spool didn't want to work well. You're going to come down to this point here, ladies. And you're going to thread everything like normal. 
But that last spool thread here, this one here, you're going to skip. You're not going to thread that. You're going to thread directly to the needle. Cut your thread. I'm just going to pull that. I'm, I'm so far away from my needle. I'm so sorry. I might have to turn this. Go ahead and pull this camera back a little bit. That's so I can get closer to the needle. I can't see. We're just going to thread. Now I'm going to pull this towards me so I can see the eye of the needle more, ladies. I'm so sorry. All right. So, blind the bat. You can use all your, those uh, handheld needle threaders if you have an issue, ladies. So you don't have the fumble like I did here. But you're going to pull that thread through. Remember not to thread number six right here, okay? You're going to keep that thread, place it underneath the foot, and let it roll here. You're going to grab your next thread on top. And bring it around, up, and then down. And this one will go into that slot and I could have done that one first okay but you want to go ahead and thread that one is in the slot the other one is not it is important to separate them so that they, they won't tangle when you're sewing put the foot down and thread that needle that one I had a better, better threading process all right, so that is the threading of a twin needle, and that's all she does. All right, I'm going to turn my machine around. <coughs> you stay right there. Make sure that you're on a straight stitch. And what I'm going to do is show you what a twin needle looks like, top and front. Is it good there? Are they being able to see that? And we have twin needle. I want to move my stitch knit a little bit longer. What's nice about a twin needle is you can meander with a twin needle and just be careful with that spool, the top spool, so it feeds right. You can also do rows and rows of straight stitching. But this is a great stitch to play with on your quilting or any type of sewing. And we're going to bring our needle up. I'm going to clip my thread. I pull my thread out. There you go. And then her is your twin needle. Make sure it's in front of them. Is it good? blurry yes okay so that's front you got it and then hers is zigzag backside okay so your twin needle will give you a zigzag back and a straight stitch front so this is a fun part you can just meander it's a great way to put texture to your quilt but what's nice is you can then take this to a home deck fabric and you can do two rows of stitching. That's right. My thread got stuck on my spool there. Give me one minute. Yep. I'm just having an issue with that one spool. So let's go ahead and show them that. That is your twin needle. I'm just going to re-thread that one spot. Make sure your spool, this one is, is such a full spool, it wants to snag on me a little bit. So I'm just having a small issue with that spool. Grab 
can you go and see if you can grab that spool stand? You know what I'm talking about? Um, and I'll show you in a second as soon as I get this threaded. Right underneath the foot. I'm gonna lift this up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This spool is so full, it wants to snag as it's stitching. So we have our, our, we can do this. We can do it so that this can move back and forth, but it just wants, it's just so much thread on there that it just wants to go over there like a little ridge. So I'm gonna be careful and not so too fast. But what I want to do is just st let you stitch this down a little bit further. And then hopefully if she can find me my thread stand, I'll show you what else you can do when you're having an issue like that. I'm just going to keep an eye on my thread. Perfect. Now, this right here is going to be much easier. So I'm going to use this because this since that spool is acting all cray-cray on me, I'm going to put this thread on my spool stand because the one that came with it with that spool is acting funny this is very very inexpensive and it's good to have it too so that if you don't want to purchase a juki cone holder that fits on the machine you can get one of those and by, by the way 20 percent off now i'm going to stitch and i'll move my little thread stand on over here And now I'm not having that problem with my feeding of my, of my thread. And there we go. So now we have a really smooth top stitch. You might not be able to see it there, but it's a really cool top stitch. Double rows of stitching. And then when you're doing a t-shirt, you know, let's say you have a shirt like mine and it's too long. Why don't you just cut it? You're gonna make the fold that you want. And you're going to turn up your hem. All right, you're ready, to roll. Okay, so here's the inside of my 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 shirt, skirt, whatever I might be doing. Also, too, a shower curtain top stitch would be great with this. You put your fabric down. There's my hem. Okay, you're going to top stitch this down. I'm gonna make a, and I'm gonna take my pressure on my pressure foot and loosen it up because what I'm having, you see that little bit of wave? Well, on our jukies, we can loosen the pressure. All machines can't do that, but this machine, you can loosen the pressure and it'll put less pressure on that fabric so it doesn't stretch out of shape. And you lift your needle up, pull. And look at the correction that I just made. So here is where I started, and you got a you get a ripple, and then this one here is loosening the pressure of your pressure foot, which then gives you a perfect flat stitch, and your seam doesn't stretch out of shape. But isn't that awesome? So that will be our top stitching of a knit fabric with a twin needle. And what you do at this point is you would take your applique scissors or scissors. You can leave this in here like this, but you would then just trim this away. And you have almost what a cover stitch does, but not truly a cover stitch. But this gives you some stretch, but not as stretchy as a cover. So you do have the, cover, the, the stretchiness because it is twin needle, but that is the coolest thing. And then let's say for instance, we want to do just some fun stitching. Well, let's go into um, maybe doing a zigzag. Now, when you're using, one more thing before we go, when you're using your needles, 4.0, 4.0 is the distance between the two needles. Our machines are seven millimeters wide opening. So on a 4.0, 
the largest zigzag I can use is a 3.0. So when I want to zigzag with my twin needle, I just take the distance between the needle and subtract 7 millimeters. And that will give us a twin needle zigzag. So now here we are with a fancier stitch. Oh, I'm going to put my foot back to pressure back on normal, which is five. I had it on one for my knit. And like I said, if it's going to happen, it does it every time I'm live. Bring my needle up. Let me just thread this one since I changed that spool. And I'm going to take this thread, this thread, and lay it in my slot first. And take this one and, oh, I have two different weights of thread. I have a 30 weight and a, and a lighter weight. That's probably what I'm having an issue with. Okay, that's okay. It happened. Now, let's stitch. Because I'm using a different, I'm using a heavier fabric. Let's take this needle out, ladies, because I'm using two layers of polyester fusible with fabric, two layers of fabric. And this is a stretch needle, remember? <laughs> you have to use the right needle. So when you don't have the right needle in, guess what? This is what happens. So it went collie wonky, see? All right, because that needle was not the right thickness or type of needle that I should be using for this fabric weight. So now let's get the right one. And what I have on hand is a jeans needle. So what I'm gonna do is use my jeans needle It's going to be a sharper point. And this won't deflect off of my fabric, which that one was deflecting because it was a ball point going through two wovens <clears throat> and a batting. And I'm going to thread my machine in the right sequence. So this thread, I'm going to thread normal. And putting this thread in that slot and going straight to the side. this one and we're not going to thread that last slot okay guys so we're going to go right straight to that needle and this has a larger eye and the needle is thicker so that it won't deflect it will cut right into that fiber so I won't have any issues with sewing uh, this canvas looking or this thickness which we almost like a bag or canvas fabric now when I stitch it's going to give me better results. I'm sorry, ladies. But that's, you know, things happen when you're on live. It always happens to me. Now we're going to stitch. And the spool. I'm just keeping an eye on my spool up on top. Because my spool is acting a little funny with that one. It's such an overwhelmed spool. So I might want to put that either on a bobbin or either on a smaller spool. But I want you to see that stitch 
and then I want to bring my needle up turn this around so that you can see the coolness of having a double needle zigzag let's pull that thread away so here's your double needle zigzag and then let's look at this because now we have this on a, a blue fabric you can really see this better and let's do it back to a straight stitch and I always like to lengthen my stitch a little bit because I'm using a twin needle and I don't need to have a very long stitch. Oh, these threads are acting funny. They're sticking on a spool. You see how I just did like a fishing line? All right, so there we go. Bring my needle up. Here we go again, just so you can see how pretty it is. And let's say I want to do two rows of straight stitching. I just simply lay my foot next to the straight stitch and sew. And then after we show this, we're going to call it a day. And just remember, ladies, we're doing discounts for these shown items. And there we are. So you can do rows and rows of this to make it look really pretty. You could do certain distance. It's just as pretty as on the back side as it in the front side. But what's cool is that it just simply fits on your machine. Standard machine. You can use your little thread holder. You can use this one. Depending on the spool, you just want to make sure that when your thread is feeding, that it's not catching on any of the little notches. Uh, if it does, it's going to break your thread. And you have the option of buying a, a Juki thread holder, a standard thread holder, or the one it comes with. Remember too that we have the special deals on the Singer and Electro, uh, Electrolux irons. Uh, all the needles are in stock. You can grab one of these little booklets as well. If you have any questions, you can call us at 757-588-1300 and join me tomorrow for the end of the bolt sale and cloa can you just show them this is going to be some of the bolts that we have on special and guess who's going to be here to help me tomorrow doug jarvis the owner of fabric hut so he said do you need me to help you tomorrow i said yes i do so you get to see his face tomorrow so he will be here tomorrow at 12 o'clock and then tomorrow at three is gotta have it so I have a collection up my sleeve that I'm going to show you. It's a special deal. And until then, y'all have a great day. Thanks.